Hi, Dr. Nate here again, and you have gone through at least a few videos already on the difference or the basics of dentistry. So remember, in the first video, we talked about how to number teeth, uh, probing depths, the difference between a profi and SRP or deep cleaning. Uh, you know the teeth, yeah, we talked about teeth numbering, you know the different surfaces of the teeth. Uh, in the next, oh, you actually even know dental coding too. A very basic knowledge of dental coding. In the other video, we talked about the difference between a crown or a filling, crown, and a root canal and also coding that kind of associates with that. So you have a lot, you have actually pretty good dental basics knowledge. The last thing, or one of the last things I wanna to talk to you about is what do you do when a patient is missing a tooth? And I talk about this because this happens a lot. We get a lot of dental emergencies here at Thrive Dental and patients most of the time just want, eh, well, not some of the time, they just want to take out the teeth, not realizing the negative consequences in the future. And there's a lot of different things we can do if financially they cannot afford to replace that missing tooth at this exact point. But I want you to know, especially when you're talking to the patients, because you talk to the patients likely more than the dentist um, gets to talk to the patient. So it's very important you know this knowledge. But what happens when a patient misses the tooth or they've got a tooth taken out and they don't want to replace it? And this is what we tell patients, and this happens all the time, and we see this all the time, is let's talk, let's talk about, it, for instance, the lower right second premolar. You guys know those numberings now, so you guys understand all this. So say we take out the second premolar because it has a massive cavity or really infected or has a big fracture and the patient goes, ah, I don't want to do anything at this point. You know, I'll do something in a few years, you know, when I can afford it or when it bothers me or whatever. And we go, okay, that's fine. You can do whatever you want, but this is the consequences of that and the reason why it is gonna be so much more expensive in the future if you don't do something now to prevent these negative consequences. So what happens? You pull out the second premolar here on the lower right side. What will happen is the first molar and the first premolar will tend to drift together. Teeth just like wanna go together. They're like good friends. They all wanna hang out together. So you have a first molar and a first premolar that tip into that spot because there's some forces coming on the teeth when you're biting and the teeth just tend to drift into that location. Also, the tooth above it will start to go down. So teeth will just kind of naturally go in to fill the spaces. This is bad, right? You want teeth to hit each other top and bottom to really occlude really good. If you have a tooth that's tilted and you have a force going down on it, it has a more or higher chance or likelihood of fracturing. So imagine this, the patient gets the tooth taken out, they don't want to do anything, we explain to them all the consequences, we say, hey, this tooth is gonna go like this, this other tooth is gonna go like this, the tooth on the top is gonna go down, and you're in a world of hurt afterwards. And they say, Psh, don't worry about it. What's gonna happen is you have a lot of force and force and force on those teeth. Yep, this tooth goes forward, this tooth goes backwards, this tooth goes down, and maybe there's so much force you actually start to get fractures on those teeth, which is even worse, right? Or even, even if that doesn't happen, say they come back in a year and whoop, that tooth has kind of gone into this area, this one's gone here and this one's come down, and they go, cool, and now, man, this really looks bad, and my, my, biting's, my bite's all off, and I'm getting food impacted, and man, this doesn't feel good. And they go, well, now I wanna get an implant. We go, cool, you can't. <laughs> because these teeth have gone into that position, there's no more space. And if there is some space, maybe the space is too small, which happens all the time. So we go, okay, you can see Dr. Nate, or you can see any of the orthodontists here, and they will have to put braces on, they'll have to open up this space, they'll have to push this tooth up, and hope and pray that that works properly, because that's not that easy to do. And then after that two years of, of orthodontic treatment, then you can get that, that um, implant or bridge that you wanted. So now, instead of spending money on just a bridge or an implant, which you could have done originally, now you have to spend a lot of money to get ortho, and then also get the bridge or the implant done later. So that's why we emphasize doing something to hold that space at the very minimum if they're not gonna do an implant or a bridge. So what is like the most affordable thing? Sometimes we don't do this that often, but sometimes if they literally can't afford anything but we wanna help them out as much as possible, we will give them a retainer. And a retainer just retains the teeth in the same position. So potentially they can just wear it at night, a few nights a week to hopefully make it so the teeth don't fall into the different positions. That's an affordable option that will work okay. It's not something we do often, but that might work. Or we go, hey, do you want maybe a flipper or partial denture? So a flipper is something that people get if they're typically just missing like one tooth. 
and it just replaces that one tooth. It's something that they'll wear most of the time, but it does not feel that comfortable. That and partial dentures and full dentures basically suck, but people have to do them because they don't have any other options. So they can get a flipper. They can also get a partial denture. Partial denture. Partial denture is if you have a lot of missing teeth, you know, here and there and everywhere, and you want to replace them, but you don't want to do something that's more expensive. So a partial denture kind of latches onto the teeth that you have already, and it uses that as a stabilizing factor and gives you a bunch of fake teeth. That's like a medium, probably it's still an affordable option, more than a flipper, more than a retainer, but it's like a medium to low expensive option. Really the best options are either going to be a bridge or an implant. And we get this question almost daily. What's the difference? What's better? How can I choose? Number one is, let's go with the bridge. Bridge is the one that people are probably most familiar with. So say in that same example, you're missing that second premolar on the lower right side. So the bridge is going to use the first molar and the first premolar and kind of use those as anchors to fill that gap with a fake tooth. So you have to actually prepare the first molar, prepare the first premolar, take an impression just like the crown, uh, just like we talked about the crowns in the previous video, send that impression off to the dental lab in a week or two, get actually in like two or three weeks, get that uh, dental bridge back and cement it with permanent cement. It's not something you take on and off, it's a permanent solution. And I think this is a great option for the vast majority of people. It's a little bit more affordable than implants. It's definitely way quicker than an implant. And most of the time it looks absolutely amazing. The disadvantage is you have to prepare the adjacent teeth. So if they're just perfectly pristine teeth and there's no issues, then you're actually drilling away perfectly healthy teeth, which sometimes isn't good. So that's a bridge. What's an implant? An implant is uh, you're basically uh, putting a titanium screw into the jaw, letting that heal for about three to five months, and then you put an abutment and a crown on that implant. The advantage of that is you don't have to touch the adjacent teeth, which is nice. So say that same example, you have these pristine teeth that are just look amazing. You don't have to mess with them. You put that implant in and then you let it heal and then you put the abutment and crown. The disadvantage of an implant is most time it's a little bit more expensive. Obviously, as you can tell by this example, it takes a lot longer to heal, a lot longer to get uh, finished. And you may need some other things. You know, if you don't have the right bone level, you may have to add bone, do different things. Um, and also you have to be worried about the different anatomy of the jaw. So potentially if you're close to a nerve or different structures, you have to be very careful. The dentist has to be very careful to put the implants in properly. All right, there you go. So that's the difference between an implant and a bridge. You know what happens if you're missing a tooth. You know the other teeth are gonna fall in there. That tooth's gonna go down. You know the different options for the patient, potentially a retainer, flipper, partial, bridge or implant, you know, the differences in between the two. And once again, we're going to go back to some bite bank videos uh, because I think these videos are absolutely outstanding. And like I said, if you don't have these and you're watching this on a different channel, definitely make sure to go, to go get it because the videos are so great. They're great patient education videos. So let's go to these bite bank videos.